Hey guys, it's Kimberly from Keep the Tail Wagging, and I am here with Tracy Werner, and we are going to be talking about raw feeding. One thing that I've always wanted to do is talk to people who have been feeding raw for a lot longer than I have. I started, you know, six years ago, and it's always been very um, complicated and dramatic, and but when I talk to people who have been feeding raw for 10, 15, 20 years, I'm always curious to know, did they have the same drama that we deal with today? So Tracy, thank you for joining me today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. This is going to be fun. How long have you been feeding raw? I've been feeding about, I guess, to made about over 20 years. Good Lord. That's crazy. How did you learn about it and why did you switch over? So long story short, I had a golden retriever at the time and he was seven years old and he was having a hard time getting up and down my stairs. My dog walker mentions, you should switch his food. And I'm like, well, what does that have to do with, you know, arthritis and whatever? Um, and then, so she says, well, at least talk to my friend who is a dog massage therapist. I'm like, okay, I understand arthritis, massage therapist. I get that. So she came over and made an appointment and she came over and um, she goes, you should switch his food. I'm like, all right, you're the second person who said that. Now tell me more about it. Um, it, it was expensive. She's like, I have two border collies. It cost me this much a day. It's not that expensive. I'm like, okay. So then she, you know, she gave him a massage. She recommended some supplements, um, glucosamine, basically. And uh, when this, and then at this time, it was Sojo's original. So it was the one with the oats and the barley and the rye. Yeah. Um, and so I had to order it online. No local stores carried any of that stuff. So I, when his supplement came and his food came within two weeks, he was cruising up and down the stairs. He didn't have doggy breath anymore. He didn't smell like a dog anymore. His coat was shinier. He was shedding less. He was happier. So I was totally sold from that moment on. Oh my gosh, that is so crazy. I love that story. So did you stick with that brand or did you, I mean, how did you, um, like what was your, your path like as a raw feeder back then? So I kind of don't remember because it's been <laughs> such a long time ago. Um, but I actually, because of that, and because I couldn't find like all of the things I needed in what on one website or in one store. So I actually, um, started my own online store at that time, um, because there was nothing I could find locally and the shipping expenses from all the other different stores were a lot. Um, so then I got, at that time there was, I think two commercial raw foods available to me at least. And then I would order from Hair Today. I'm sure you know that name. <laughs> and um, so that's kind of where I, then I switched to some commercial raw. And then I went back to doing it myself. Then I went back to commercial. So I've done kind of the whole kind of gamut. Um, and then most recently within the past four years, I've studied nutrition under Dr. Jean Dodds. Oh, yeah. And I started formulating, formulating diets too. So oh, wow. That's really fun. Oh my God. This yeah. is so impressive. So yeah. One of the big things that happens, you know, like in the raw feeding groups and everything is people get so stressed out about, you know, balancing and there's a whole contingent of people who, and I don't disagree with them, that are just basically balance is key. And I've always wondered, did people worry about balance 20 years ago? Not really. No, no. But I think we've come a long way in our knowledge and our understanding and um, the the nutrient database that's available online from the FDA is up. I don't even know if that was up back then. So we have a little bit more insights into the, the ingredients and how we put them together right. um, than we did back right. then. But yeah, I've done it all. I've done, I haven't done pre-model. I'll say that. I just, and just for no real reason, it's nothing against it. Just haven't. I, I'm a vegetarian, so I eat veggies a lot. So I give them to my dogs. Um, but I've done barf. I've done 80, 10, 10. I've done, you know, with bone, without bone, all over the place. So, and, and the notion of balance over time, you can absolutely achieve that, but you still need to know what your, the nutrients you're trying to balance. Like, what are yeah. your goals? You know, what does your particular dog need? Yeah, and that that's something that I, I came to understand over the past year. And when I first started really, and you know, I use the USDA database and there's another bad, database that I've used as well. And when I put all of that together and Destiny helped me with what my dogs need um, in their diet, I was actually quite surprised that um, I wasn't covering everything. I was covering most things, but I wasn't covering everything. Yeah, and then, you know, there's, there's studies out linking uh, vitamin D deficiency to canine cancers. There's, you know, zinc is uh, another immune nutrient. 
So if we're not hitting all those things, we're not going to see any detriment like immediately or in four weeks or even probably a couple of years. But, you know, did my 13 year old dog get cancer because I wasn't meeting his vitamin D nutrients? I'll never know. But so those kind of things are always questioning and I'm always researching. Yeah. And I, th- I think it's one of those things where I understand the hesitation to push people because th- that's always my concern is when I'm talking to people who are brand new to raw feeding, I don't want to go, oh, and here's my nutrient spreadsheet. And this is what I do <laughs> because I feel like they're going to run screaming away from me. But I feel Absolutely. on our path, we, we really have to get there. And as you stated, those deficiencies don't show up right away. So, um, but they do eventually show up. Exactly. Exactly. And and so when it comes to formulating diets, what exactly does that entail? So we, um, I have an intake form. So breed, age, weight, lifestyle, you know, activity level, spay, neuter, all of those things affects what their daily energy requirements are. So you first start with how many calories they need. Um, and then the nutrients fall in line with that. So then we have to meet their daily requirements within the, those, those calorie requirements. Right. Um, so I have a software program Oh, nice. and that, that helps me, but it's a lot of math still re- without the program. Well, I mean, I think it's awesome that there are people like you in the community that can help with things like that, because, you know, I was actually looking over an old video that I did with Rodney and he mentioned the fact that we made the mistake of, um, feeding these percentages, but not thinking about the calories in the meal. So, and it was just sort of like, yeah, you're right. I mean, I feed the exact same amount of beef that I do of, you know, duck, for instance, but I have no idea the calorie amount in each of those meals. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And what kind of beef is it, you know, 85, 15 or 90, 10. So fat is the most calorically dense macronutrient there is then protein, then your carbs. So yeah, for the cut of meat is very important too. So what happened that made you go from just feeding your dogs to really wanting to educate yourself about what your dogs needed? So with the um, with my store that I had, um, I had a, a, I actually had a physical brick and mortar location for 15 years. I sold it two years ago. Um, but a lot of, so through those 15 years, there's recalls that happened. And one of them was the, um, the melanin crisis in 2007. Mm-hmm. And then the most recent one was the Avengers crisis two years ago. Um, so what, every time those kind of big crises has happened in the pet food industry, people want to make their own food. Yeah. I'm totally understandably, um, cause you can control the ingredients, you know, where it comes from, you know, you buy it at the grocery store, it is human grade for sure. Um, but I've seen, I saw a lot of those people do it without balancing it. You know, we can't just throw in a calcium supplement and a multivitamin and it's a balanced meal. Um, and I've, I've seen, you know, even veterinarian websites where they recommend, <clears throat> excuse me, home my diets. And I ran those through my software and they're not balanced at all. <laughs> so even in the advice of your veterinarian, you know, so it's just, and it's kind of this, the person who I am, I'm a researcher. Um, I actually love science. I love math. So it kind of just fell into like, let me try to help you do this. And so I was helping my customers really. And then it kind of turned around to, to helping my dogs as well. That, that is so amazing. And so for people watching this, if they want your help, how would they reach out to you? So I'm on Facebook under The Barking Cook. Okay, nice. I'll put a link of that in the notes. And Tracy, thank you so much for talking to me. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, this has been great. Thank you so much. Thanks for getting the word out.